Landing struts primed. Retro's fire. Should be plenty of we should have a call. Welcome to Paradiso. Jiro Sugiyama at your service. Do you have a security concern, or is there something else I can help you with? Ah, yes, of course. I'm glad you came. As you can imagine, we're in a bit of a predicament. Under normal circumstances, we would not enlist outside help in this manner. But this is a matter we can't afford to worry our guests about. As such, we need to handle this discreetly. Failure on your part to do so could have severe consequences. So, before we proceed, can you swear not to discuss this with anyone else unless explicitly directed to do so? Great. I appreciate it. Not too long ago, a strange and enormous ship appeared in Parima space. It is now locked in orbit around our planet. So far, it doesn't seem to be hostile, but any attempts to communicate with it have been in vain, so we're unsure of the ship's intentions. Can't say for sure. Looks worn, but not cobbled together like a Crimson Fleet Junker. Others have been saying it's some new Varun design, a gigantic battleship with hidden armaments preparing for assault, but that doesn't check out either. There's also been talk about non-human sentient life, the comms data we received might support that, but humanity spread far and wide, and no one's ever encountered anything like that. Still, first contact. Could you imagine? Eh, not quite. It took some time, but we received a transmission. It was all... pardon the phrasing. It sounded almost alien, like nothing anyone's heard before. Clicks, distorted groans, buzzing... Really disturbing sounds. Now, one of our engineers says it could just be some busted comm equipment or incompatible signals, but we're not sure. So far, no one's disembarked from the ship. No landing craft, nothing. We don't have the staff or ships to spare, and otherwise we'd dock with it and attempt to board. It bears no discernible markings or allegiances to any manufacturers we're aware of. I'm hoping that doesn't mean we're dealing with some sort of new deep space threat. It is. Whatever's going on, we need to approach this with care. First, see if you have more luck communicating with them. If not, you may have to try boarding. Whatever you do, it's important to remember to seek diplomacy with who or what ever's on board. As soon as you have any more information, report to Oliver Campbell. He's the CEO of Paradiso. All formal decisions will need to go through him, and he'll have your pay. Good luck. when you are, Captain. When you have a moment, I'd like to speak to you.
have something for you when you have a moment. Hi. Please disregard. I attempted an informal greeting, but I am dissatisfied with the results. Stay alert. You're human. It's just that we weren't expecting to find life, let alone human life out here. We thought we were the only ones to leave Earth. Imagine being cut off from humankind for that long. How terribly frightening that would be. Perhaps we should greet our guests. Of course. Manners. I'm Captain Diana Brackenridge. This is Security Officer Bomani Reader. Hmm. And this is Dr. Mabuti da Costa, one of our elders. A pleasure to meet you. I see. As you may have presumed, we're in a bit of a bind. Our ship has finally completed its near 200 year journey from Earth, only to find our new home seemingly colonized by... Well, we don't know. Communications haven't been successful, so your arrival is fortuitous. Perhaps you'd be willing to act as a middle person between ourselves and... the others. Oh yes, of course. Where are my manners? Now then, please follow me. There's much to discuss first. We'll speak more on the matter once we reach the bridge. Dr. DaCosta, you may return to your quarters if you wish. When you have a moment, I'd like to speak to you. I will follow you to the bridge, ma'am. We were never That's trained to address this. threats coming from outside I our do ship. not believe we have need to fear our guest, but I'll allow it if you insist. Welcome to the Earth colony ship, Constant. In the early 2100s, my ancestor, Rupert Brackenridge, researched a number of scientific scenarios, climate change, asteroid impact, nuclear war, global pandemic, and more. Each scenario showed the likelihood of an extinction-level event to be within 50 years. He fully believed Earth was destined to be rendered uninhabitable. We've always assumed that's what happened. Never seen so, a ship like he gathered the before. best and brightest he could find, built the constant, before. and set a course for this planet here. We were told that it was the largest, most advanced ship ever constructed on Earth at the time. If you can believe, entire generations have been born, lived, and died on this ship. It really goes to show that there are no limits to human ingenuity and perseverance. Just stay out of trouble. Careful waving that fancy gun around. We don't need to see what it can do. So, here we are. We should have a minute talk. When you have the time, of course. If you don't mind, I'd like to speak to Admiral Logan sooner rather than later. We didn't believe anyone would be out here, but I'm glad for it. Difficult is the wrong word. It can be both challenging at times, and also exciting. Our mission was to rebuild humanity on a distant world, believing that we were Earth's last hope. To think that while there has always been a Brackenridge in the captain's chair, that I am the one to finally oversee our journey's end is truly exhilarating. But with this stumbling block in our path, at this final moment, I fear tough choices will need to be made. A bit frazzled, as you can imagine. People are anxious about discovering that we're not alone, and also worried about what will come to pass. While we hope we can work out a deal with the people on the surface, they seem reluctant to reach out, so there's no telling what will come of that. I do know that we can't afford to stay here in orbit forever. The ship was built to sustain us for many years with backup provisions just in case, but even that will come to an end eventually. I think I'm coming up on six years now. I was only a teenager when my father died, passing command of the ship to me, as is tradition. Because of that, I've had to sort of learn as I go along, instead of taking years of study and apprenticeship under the prior captain. I think some people on the ship resent me for not having the level of experience as my predecessors. 
But at the same time, without my command, we likely wouldn't have made it here so quickly. Well, as I mentioned, we've been unsuccessful in communications with anyone up until you arrived, though not for lack of trying. But since you're asking, maybe you'd be willing to be a sort of diplomat between us and them as we attempt to resolve our situation. Does that sound agreeable to you? We suspect that our equipment is woefully obsolete compared to whatever you all have now. In all honesty, we never expected to need to communicate with anyone, so our comms aren't particularly robust. That limits our options. We even attempted communicating with lights and sounds, something we saw in an old movie, but I don't believe they picked up on it. If anything, it may have inadvertently alarmed them. Ah, oh, so they have a name. Paradiso. And it sounds promising that they sent you here to speak with us. You see, we intended to settle here, but we assumed that they intend to defend their claim given their presence here. We'd like you to go speak to them on our behalf and help us negotiate a solution, preferably one that favours us. Based on the data our ancestors had when they launched this endeavour, it was determined that this was the perfect planet for us. Even if we had another viable candidate planet, we lacked the resources to get there. And as you know, it took us 200 years to get here. Our people have no desire to go back to drifting the stars so their children's children can possibly settle on an inferior planet. Excellent. Make no mistake, this is our planet, and we intend for them to see this our way. So, speak with their leadership and see if you can negotiate a solution on our behalf. Preferably, get them to see things our way. Report back to me and let me know what they say, and we'll go from there. We thought about it, but it simply won't do. I need to think about the distant future of our people. Sure, our first settlement may be small, but our predecessors dreamt of our new civilization spreading across the globe. That would be difficult if someone else plans to do the same. While we're not completely close to the idea of sharing, it's much easier if we have complete domain over this world. Thank you, and Godspeed. Just because our equipment's old, doesn't mean it won't work to take care of it. Now that we know what's out there, it's a problem. People always appreciate the good engine, whether they know it or not. I wonder what else is out there. Wow. I've heard about you, but... Here you are. The Constant is a peaceful ship. Strict rules around here, but they're strict for a reason. But when you're ready to launch.
Just stay out of trouble. Paradiso is absolutely beautiful. Can you possibly imagine a more tranquil place for a resort? Welcome to Paradiso. Excuse me, you can't just waltz in there. Do you have an appointment? When you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. Oh, you're the one they're waiting for then. Do you need anything else from me before you meet with the board? People were a little freaked out around here, understandably. It looks so different and it's so massive. We honestly thought we were under attack by an unknown entity. But then nothing happened. It just stayed there. No one could communicate with it. And we've been very careful not to alert the resort guests. The board believed it would be bad for business. <laughs> what I could tell you would get me in a lot of trouble. Most of them are typical sea level execs. I doubt you even need to use your imagination for that. The ones that show up to work day to day, at least. I swear, I've never even met some of them because they chill at their own private secluded beach homes all the time. Anyway, be smart around Oliver. He's got a way of getting what he wants without you realizing it. And that's all I'll say. Sure, have fun in the shark tank. And don't worry, even they call it that. I just feel that we should be focusing on the if natural If it's not important, bring it up with Keevy. Not our amenities. I am. And you must be the diplomat Jiro told me about. Welcome, welcome. Normally I'd offer you an all-inclusive stay at our resort before we spoke. But given these circumstances, I'm gonna cut to the chase. We've got our friends, the aliens, up there causing all sorts of problems for our resort. You like that? The marketing team came up with it. The thought is, if we can't get rid of them, it might actually attract more tourism. Come see the aliens! <laughs> Ah, we're being direct then. Good on ya. <laughs> so, what do you know about this dodgy ship I'm hearing all about? Hmm. 
Well, that's something. Shame we can't just tell them kindly to bugger off. Something tells me that's not going to work. Now, tell me, what are we going to do about it? Give me some proposals, people. I need something to work with here. Hmm. We could offer to resettle them here. There's more than enough space. They could stay here. Temporarily. But it'll cost them. Quite a bit, too. They'd need to work off all their debts before being allowed to leave. Ah, uh, maybe not. What if we help them get out of here? Outfit their ship with a grab drive so they can find a new home. We could even lend our engineers to help and give their captain an updated star map. What do you think? Sounds costly. We can't absorb that cost, and it's unlikely they even have compatible currency, let alone enough for the transaction. Someone else would have to foot the bill. Oh, I swear this would be a lot easier if they ceased to exist entirely. Anyway, Seema's got the right idea. Either works for me. Just tell me what you want to do. Oh, I didn't say that specifically. This would be a mutual contract. For room and board in exchange for services rendered. Of course, there's no telling how long this arrangement will last, given the substantial costs we'd need to take on in order to accommodate them here, including their continued room and board. But this may save the resort on operating costs in the long term, as we'd be able to let go of some of our current paid staff. <laughs> It's not our responsibility to bear the brunt of that cost. We're being more than generous by offering the use of our engineering team to help install it. A custom grab drive can't come cheap, and I assume they have neither the monetary means nor the connections to get a hold of that kind of technology. That leaves the only other party in this negotiation. You. No, I'm not suggesting anything. Other than it would make our lives so much easier if that ship ceased existing. Make of that what you will. We operate outside of the Free Stars and the UC, partially because we don't want anyone else meddling in our affairs. And we'd rather not draw attention to it, as I've mentioned. It could be bad for business. We'd much rather settle this independently. We own this planet, they don't. Here at Paradiso, we don't like leaving things to chance. Who knows what these people will do with their land? Imagine the landscaping disasters they might come up with, and how that might mar the satellite imagery of the planet in our brochures. No, much better to assimilate them into our culture if they come here to live, rather than leave it to chance. absurd or not, that's our official stance. I make the decisions that are best for our entire group. You don't. And which proposal will you be taking to the good captain? I assume there's a captain? They'd be hard-pressed to defend their claim in any courts. Our charter goes back years. It was registered with both the UC and Free Star Collective, per the Centaurus Proclamation. We may be outside the settled systems, but that charter's official as can be. I'm sorry, but you're going to need to be the one to break the news to them that they need to make a compromise or leave. Ah, good on you. You want to see a man named Benny St. James over at Hope Tech. He's the best in the business. If anyone can retrofit a 200-year-old ship with a modern grab drive, it'd be him. We'll coordinate our engineering team with his when you return. Though you may have to help the Constance engineers prepare for it on their end. Good luck. I know this was a difficult decision. But if it's any consolation, I think you've made the right choice. Compared to the destruction of their vessel and relegating them to a life of servitude, I'd say this is the best chance they've got. Right. On behalf of the Paradiso group, we appreciate your help. There There's are something millions I need to talk to you about. Out there. People can go to any one of them. The res
From what I... I have something I need to discuss with you. I don't want to hear any complaints. Keep an eye on your valuables. interested in. We'd be dust, except for the factory. Off-worlders. Nothing good ever comes from them. Oh, hello. Someone worth paying attention to. Sure, that sounds like me. What can I do for you? I'm a little busy, but uh, I think I could spare some time. You just said that. Of course I can help you. Oliver sent a courier ahead of you. I did some research on ships from that era, and I have a decent idea what we're dealing with. So grab drives didn't really take off until after the ship was built. But I've got access to an ancient grab drive that looks like it could be compatible. It's some minor adjustments. It's in good shape, too. Parts not cheap, though. Neither is the labor. Just pay the combined cost of parts and labor and it's yours. It's a pretty big ask, given how rare these old grab drives are. Perhaps not. But I don't want to just settle for an offer far below its value. This part is incredibly difficult to come by. Maybe it is selfish of me to demand such a price. Tell you what. Sounds like this is for a good cause. While I can't give you the part for free, I won't charge you for the work. You're done, right it is. I'll get to work on it right away. I recommend you go back to the ship and ask the captain to prepare for its retrofit. Standard stuff. I'm sure they have an engineer on board to help. We'll send the part along when it's ready and install it with the help of Oliver's people. Pleasure working with you. Lift my time. 
entire life in the constant. I'm not sure how else to live. <laughs> I was hoping to talk to our visitor from outer space, and here you are! Welcome, welcome! I have a million burning questions, but I won't overwhelm you. There will be plenty of time for that later. Please, indulge me just a couple. How did you do it? Did humanity finally discover faster than light travel and eclipse our poor old ship? Oh, I've heard of this technology, but always believed it was theoretical in nature. Maybe we can talk about it in more detail later. I'm sure you have more pressing matters to handle. I've waited this long. What's a little longer, eh? Oh, I've got so many questions, but I'm being rude. I haven't even given you my name. Chief Engineer Kazemi, but you can call me Amin. And, I might add, I'm one of the reasons we're still floating out here today. Yes, of course. Anything for my new friend. Great question. I do not know for sure, but I can venture a guess. All of the reading I've done on the matter suggests that at the time, there was uncertainty that the technology would ever work, or if it did, that it would work at the scale we needed. So, I trust they made the decision to strike out when they did, fully believing it was the only way. Some may say I'm a master of keeping things together with nothing but duct tape and bubble gum. Well, if we had any gum left. Pretty sure that ran out a hundred years ago. When I'm not dealing with catastrophic engine failures, I manage the other engineers. We maintain all the machinery, computers, you name it. We keep the life support on and the ship flying. Many years ago, when I was a junior engineer, the reactor's computer burned out. The computer that controls the reactor's various regulators. I'll spare you the details, but when that happens, the ship and everyone on it is in danger of turning into a mess of hot slag. I had to jury rig parts from old media devices to prevent a meltdown. And that's how I became the boss around here. What crap tried? <laughs> Just joking with you. The Paradiso engineers filled me in. Okay, let's see what we need to do. Hmm. All right, this will be fun. And hopefully there will be no explosions in the process. I have just received word that the drive is here. Ready to get to work? Great, great, great. There are three preparations I need you to help me make while I set things up on my end. First thing I need you to do is reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Then, turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Last, you'll need to decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. Got it? Let's hop to it!
These are exciting times, aren't they? If the other colonists knew how many... Ah, uh, something wrong? There are three things we need. Reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cryogenic radiator. Turn the plasma runoff inhibitor function to 5%. Decouple the magnetic flange pipe enclosures from the auxiliary module assembly. Good luck out there! You tell want you. something. Ah, something. Alien or something. There's still something left to do. Reroute the power from the port turbo pump to the auxiliary cry. So long. No matter the outcome, I won't let my crew down. Well, well. It would appear we have the means to go nearly anywhere now, thanks to you. The engineers even upgraded our communications equipment so we can speak with passing ships. Turns out it was a pretty easy fix. Thank you again for all you've done. We don't yet know, but we did receive a star map from the Paradiso engineers. I suppose we'll just chart a course for other suitable habitable worlds until we find one that matches the quality of Paradiso, uh, Puruma 2 here. Without you, we'd most likely be stuck, but you went above and beyond. I'll make sure people tell tales of your generosity for as long as our society lives. I don't know if we can ever fully repay you. Thank you again. You're lucky we're under orders not to escort you right off this ship. <laughs> 